Bring in now a flight instructor, uh, Philip Holloway is going to join us. He holds a commercial pilot's license. Philip says he cancels some flights due to human factors like fatigue, illness, and stress. Too stressed out, you shouldn't fly. That seems like a no-brainer. Absolutely, it's a no-brainer. You know, uh, this is about motive. If the, if the pilot is being looked at, and it's apparent that he is, they're investigating this as a crime. And if it was a suicide, it was certainly a murder-suicide. And motive is going to have to be explored very thoroughly. And in terms of human factors, as you mentioned, Shep, uh, all pilots have to go through a checklist of their, of their own to make sure that they personally are airworthy before they get in the cockpit to fly. And if they're overstressed, if they have marital problems, things like that, maybe they should just stay down. I, I hate this idea of talking about a guy who went down with the plane. It's, as far as I know, he's, he's as innocent you and I are, as you and I are. But Correct. Since they're investigating this as a, as a crime, and since they are focusing on this man, I, I just wonder if... If you think that's fair, I mean, in a lack of evidence, we don't know what was on the flight simulator. It'd be nice to know. Right. It would be very nice to know. But yes, I think it's fair because until we know what happened, everything's on the table. And if you're going to investigate this thing as a crime, one thing that has to be explored is motive. And to get there, you're going to have to try your best to get into the head of this captain and find out what was going on with him in the days and perhaps weeks leading up to this tragedy. Well, we got these reports from the New Zealand Herald newspaper. And we talked about this briefly yesterday, that a very good friend of the captain, says that the captain was very upset when his wife said that she was leaving him. He was also apparently, according to the reporting of this newspaper, dating another woman. Uh, you, you, you know, you stir all of that up and the soup's rancid. It does. You know, and having practiced law for 16 years, I have seen lots of specific instances where people do things that are way out of character when you have a situation involving uh, the breakup of a marriage or some type of uh, romance, um, in, in particular when somebody's caught cheating or there's some infidelity. You know, I don't want to speculate that any of this stuff was going on, but it has to be explored. The, the son says he's read everything online, doesn't believe a bit of it, knows his father, and this is just, this is stupid, nonsensical talk about his father who's gone. Well, one's heart just bleeds for this, this oh. child as well as the, it, everybody's family involved, and nobody wants to think that their loved one or certainly their father could be capable of something like that. And let's hope that he wasn't, because I would pr prefer to give him the presumption of innocence, but if we're going to have an accurate and complete investigation, all of these things have to be looked into, including whether or not that pilot himself was airworthy that day. We won't know what the pilot said in the last few hours of this flight, if anything, because the pilots have been so pushy about not recording long periods of their conversations up there that we don't we don't get the 30 minutes. That's right. And I've always been a strong proponent that everything should be recorded and preserved because, you know, uh, we've got to get to the answers that these families deserve and that the world deserves, because as long as, as we're going to be using commercial air travel, we've got to make sure that it is as safe as, as, as humanly possible. So the more information that we can have, the better. And if it means that a little bit of uh, privacy is invaded in the cabin or in the cockpit, so be it. I think it's worth the price. Philip Hollyway, good to talk to you, Philip. Thanks very much.